so here is the so that let's say the HC loop. So it's a very interesting uh, construction actually, which was so this this was a thesis of Zydel's thesis with uh, Donald, Donaldson, and uh, it's a very nice idea, which is uh, which is the following. So you start uh, uh, so you start with the synthetic manifold, and then uh, you look at the group M. So this is the group of Hamiltonian diffeomorphism of M omega. Now you take the identity, identity component, uh, the identity, uh, the identity, ident identity here, and then you just look at any loop. Let's call it phi t. So any loop that belongs to S1, and uh, so this loop is not so. This loop is not necessarily, as I, I think I said that this morning, but it's not necessarily a one-parameter subgroup. So what I mean is that it is not necessarily generated by a, a, a autonomous Hamiltonian. If it, if it were generated by an autonomous Hamiltonian, then it would be a subgroup of Ham. But here I just take any loop, okay, absolutely any loop, just a, just a C infinity loop based at the identity, so generated by a non-autonomous non Hamiltonian in general. And uh, so, uh, so now the, 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 this phi, so this phi, uh, I call it phi or phi t, so phi acts on the Fleur homology in a very simple way. So on the Fleur homology, actually, actually, actually it, will, it will also act on the quantum homology, but the construction, construction would be completely different. I mean, very much different. So it acts, so this construction here is, is analytical, whereas the other one, other one uh, uh, is uh, the action on the, the, the quantum homology is actually more uh, geometric in nature. So, so phi acts in the following way. Uh, uh, so by in, the, in this way, so you, so you, you, you fix, so if, in order to have a Fleur homology, of course, so this is the Fleur complex. So it depends on, on, uh, on M. So, uh, and the uh, normal complex function J. And choice of some Hamiltonian, HT, in 0, 1. So we see, so you see, you, we have two Hamiltonians here. The, this one, let's say, is generated by KT. So it is any loop, which is generated by KT, uh, which is Hamiltonian. And this one is simply the auxiliary, auxiliary, auxiliary of Vapin that is, uh, that are needed to define the Fleur complex. So now, uh, so now the action is in the following way. So it's, it's very simple. It's completely natural. You have, you have phi, so this phi t. I call it phi, if you wish. Uh, phi that acts on gamma. So, uh, so gamma here is a, so because this is a Fleur homology, I recall, and we are working in the absolute case. There is no Lagrange to manifold here. So, so a generator, I, rec I just recall that a generator is something like this, like this, it's gamma t, where gamma t is simply a periodic orbit of the, of the flow of ht. And we have capped that, we have capped that with a disk. So now phi acts on this gamma and the disk uh, in the following way. So uh, first of all, I think I need, yes, I, I need a D0 here. So D0 will be the following. You take a point, just a point, P, and then you take the loop generated by phi, phi T applied to P. Okay, so, <coughs> And now you choose, so now you choose a, a capping disk, arbitrary. Okay, so these loops are, are contractible. So you, you choose a, you choose a, a capping disk, and, uh, and so let's call it D0. And the, uh, the whole construction will depend on the choice of this capping disk. So if you, if you change a capping disk by some other, uh, by using uh, an element of the pi 2 of the ambient manifold, if you change D0 to D0, D, D0 prime, then we'll get a, a, a very, a, I mean, a similar theory leading to the same conclusions, but we just have to choose something. We just have to choose one of these. So now you define phi D0, so as being uh, the following. So, so, so phi is this phi T here. So it acts on gamma in the obvious way. So that's phi T of gamma T. So you just apply pointwise. So you have this loop here and you just apply, apply, apply this pointwise to the, to the loop, which is there. And then now uh, you, you, you take, so oh, what is the notation of that? Phi star, phi star of D, of D. 
So now it's, uh, so this is defined in the following way. Uh, No, is it, no, this is exactly what I said. No, exactly. This is what I said. Sorry, T of phi. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Yes, but it, it's a closed trajectory. Yes. Okay, it's closed. Okay, oh, okay. so ah. because it's closed, then it's uh, it's parameterized. So both are parameterized by, by, parameterized by the circle. Okay, so. okay just apply. Yeah. Okay, sure. yeah. And uh, what else? Oh, yes, exactly. So yes, now I need yes a picture here. So now, now this is uh, so just now, so now. I have to explain what is the action of. So this is not obvious because here you see you have a, it's, uh, it's, it's easy to see you have a disc, a capping disc, and you have a, a phi t which is a, so you have a capping disc for this. So it's not, if, uh, it's not obvious how to cook, to cook out from the, no, the, the null image of phi t and d0 to cook out this, uh, this, uh, the image by the image of this capping disc. So what we do is the following. Uh, where did I put this? So, key. so you have, uh, so you have uh, q here. So. So this is, let's say gamma t starts at the point Q. So now you decompose this disk in this following way. So, this, so it starts at Q, so you have this capping disk D, and then you just foliate this in the following way. Okay, and until you get at the, at the point Q. So you, get this, you have this foli foliation, and then you can apply gamma t to each of these uh, circles. Okay, so, so, you, so phi star of D, Will be the union. Will be the union of the image of by by phi t over uh, over s. So this is a foliation given by. So let's call this uh, uh, delta s. Say. So these are curves. So you just take the the image of phi t over delta s. Okay. So this gives you. So this gives you a, a, a surface. But when, you, when, when this, uh, when this first foliation delta s, when s comes to zero, then you just have the point. And then now you need to glue that because you, you wish to apply phi t, phi t, not, not only to a, not, not to a curve, but to a point q. And when, when you apply phi t to a, curve, to a point q, there is no reason that it be a point. Usually it's, it's, it's exactly what I, what I drew here. So you, so you just take this union with, with uh, the disk d0. Uh, yes, the fact that this 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 this, this zero is uh, is uh, more or less based at the point P or based at the point Q, it's the same because you can you can just have a, take a curve here and then just push this disk along the curve. Okay, so that's the definition of the image of phi d zero on B. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So so this is so so this is meant to be uh, an so this is a, the shape of that is. The shape of that is this. So the shape. So, so this is a. So this is like something like this. Okay. So this is this first part. Okay. And this is so these. So these. Each of the curve here is the image by. So it's so when you when when you go in that direction is p, and when you and when you look at the foliation itself, the foliation is parameter parameter parameterized by s. So it's like phi t of delta s. I call it delta, delta, delta s of the version of the basis for the So delta s is the curve, is the curve in the foliation. So the, the, the delta s is defined by the same q as phi t. I'm sorry? So if you take the s by the same q as phi t. No, 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 no. There is no relation between s and q. It's completely, completely uh, no, no, no. orthogonal. Uh, independent. No, 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 yeah, of course, yes, you take a parameterization given by S is just the, S is just the parameter that, that uh, describes uh, the elements of the family, and for each one, you choose the parameterization given by T, uh, along T, for, 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 for each one. Does it say the same T? No, yes, yes, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, so that's 
that's, so that's what you get here, and then you fill this up. So now you fill it, you fill this. Yeah, let's use the, really work this way. So you fill it now with this. Okay, so, um, so this is the point. No, exactly. That's the point, because uh, uh, because every, yes, because this yes. Th th thank you for the question. This I only I only care about the human thickness of that bit. Okay, as usual in this in all this, uh, all these talks, uh, I I don't care about and it's when I when I use a cutting bit or it's always just up to a motor piece. Okay. So, 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 so exactly. So if you have a, if you have chosen a uh, cutting bit to go up to the point C. Then you just transport it by point Q using any path. Okay, perfect. Now, uh, so okay, so that this is the definition, and uh, and uh, so yeah. And so now the uh, the uh, okay. So now the the map. Itself now it's uh, so this so now what so so now this is, so this was an element in the Fleur homology of M J H T so here so so this so the, this 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 pair here belongs to uh, the, the Fleur complex the Fleur complex Fleur complex of uh, of uh, M J H but now here this one here okay belongs to the Fleur complex of okay of M and so the same G and a different uh, map okay which is the different Hamiltonian which is not H let, let's let's call it G okay I use the, the letter K here so let's call it G and G is simply the generating Hamiltonian for for the uh, for the, uh, the 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 loop phi t of gamma t okay, gamma t is a loop phi t is a loop so the composition is a loop it is a uh, and it's very easy, so it's very easy to show that this composition. Uh, so it, what I mean exactly is the following. So phi t, phi, phi t is the, the, the flow generated by uh, by this uh, by this kt, and we have the flow generated by ht, and we just compose both both flows. So then, if you compose those both two Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian isotopies, then it is still Hamiltonian. And then you can describe explicitly what is the, 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 the generating Hamiltonian, but I don't want to, uh, to, to, uh, to write this formula down. So yes, so you get that this belongs to this belongs to the Fleur homology of M J M J G M J G uh, for some some other Hamiltonian which is different from H. Okay, now this. Uh, So now we get a map. So let's just write this again. We had a map from the Fleur complex. So actually, from the, so we can of course so this this passes to um, to the to the homology. So we have a map from F star F H star of uh, M G H to F H star of M G G. And now you compose with uh, the theorem that I explained this morning. You know that there is a canonical identification between this and that one. So now we compose with this. So now this is so that now this is a Zydel morphism. And now you compose here with the can canonical ad identification. Uh, that's D zero, that's phi phi D zero. And so the canonical identification to F H F H star of M. J H, and then you, now, now you compose both, and then you get something which is an isomorphism. It's clear that it is an isomorphism because both this is this is an isomorphism, and this one can be reversed easily. So it's clear that it is an isomorphism too. So you get an, uh, an isomorphism, and the uh, and the theorem by that I will not have to time to explain, but the theorem by by Zydel is the following. So. Uh, Exactly, by so any homotopy between H and A. Is it true yes. that if the uh, Hamiltonian loop is contractible, then uh, the, the composition is identical? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, we'll see some. We, we will see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, because it looks like it's, it's contractually in real life. No, this the is the, the, the size of the morphism will actually only depend on the homotopy class of the. Oh. Yeah. So if you look at this contractible, this, this will be the identity. So, so the term from uh, from Zaino is the fact that um, so that behaves well with respect to the quantum product uh, to the pair of fan pair of fan product. With respect to uh, to the pair of fan product. Oops. Of, of uh, in, in Fleur homology. So we uh, recall that this flow, this, this pair of fan uh, product is given by this. And, uh, and, the, and what, what we get is that this xylomorphism for phi d0 uh, star of a quantum, uh, product of pant, pair of pant of a and b is actually equal. So this actually it's a module over itself. So you can take a outside and this gives the result which is the one, the one like this. So we're here just, you just take, it is enough to take this in the ordinary homology of, of the, in, the, in the ordinary homology, if you wish. It doesn't matter, these are generators of, uh, of the homology. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, what it, they are in the flow homology. So, uh, so, the, uh, so this is what you get in, SP, in, in particular if B is the identity, for the, for the product. So yes, note, note that I always work in, in homology. So the, the identity for the product in homology, for the ordinary product, for the ordinary product, the, uh, the identity is the, is the fundamental class of the manifold M. OK, so because of course, if you intersect anything with this fundamental class, uh, you get this anything. So, uh, so this is actually what you, what, you, what you get. And this implies that, actually, this, this, um, this, uh, this homomorphism here. Uh, five, zero star is simply is simply the pair of fan product by a fixed element, and this, this fixed element is exactly this one. Exactly this one when B is the identity. the fundamental class of M. Okay, so this is the term by Zano. And, uh, and then another theorem is that this is, this is the, so I would say a proposition, you see. Okay, so, uh, so these, so this idol of is independent of the homotopy class. It's independent of the homotopy class of the loop. Then the design of this is the identity. But there are many examples where it's not the case. Yes, if, so it's very simple. When, when you change d0 by, so if you, change, if, you, if you change d0 by something else, like d0 prime, then the difference d0 minus d0 prime is an element of the, in, the, in, the, in the H2 spherical of the manifold. And then it means that the, 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 the morphism is shifted by such an element. It's just, it's just, just that, yes. Yeah. Ah, okay, that's a 
very good question also. Yeah, it, it's not such, uh, so easy to prove, but if you have a, a loop of a maintaining isomorphism that apply to a point P, you can actually prove, always prove that, you can prove that it's always contractible. Yeah. Of, of, of course, if the, if the loop is just a mistake, it is like, oh, you know. But if the loop is uh, Hamiltonian, then you can prove it. It's not, it's not, it's not obvious. You see, uh, one way of proving this would be to use the uh, Arnold conjecture, the solution to the Arnold conjecture, but it's a bit, uh, it's a bit heavy, uh, I would say. Uh, uh, you use a very strong uh, tool to prove something that you can prove elsewhere. But if, okay, so, yes, so the theorem actually, so yes, I'm going to, to, to say, to state, I, I've already, already stated this theorem by uh, uh, Macduff, Matarevich, and, and myself. And uh, actually, there's an another theorem, which is uh, completely related to this, that tells you that if you look at the, at the, uh, at the action of, of uh, the homology of Ham uh, over uh, the homology of M to M, this is trivial in homology. Okay, so th this action is, you take any class of, I mean, to any, any cycle of Hamiltonian diffeomorphism, you applied each, you take the trace, so you applied each of these to all the elements in the cycle in M. Then you get a, a cycle here, whose dimension is the sum of the two here, of course. Okay? And then this so, uh, uh, corollary of our main theorem, that, so that use uh, heavy machinery, is that this is, this is zero. This is, this map is completely zero. So this use heavy machinery except when, except when this is one and this is zero, <laughs> okay, which is exactly the case here. Okay, and, and, and in this case, you can prove it judged by uh, with the uh, topology for uh, consideration. So what, what is the map? Just uh... You just apply, yes. So you, okay, so you have a cycle C. Mm -hmm. Oops. And then here you have a cycle uh, one. Let's see how far back. Okay, so okay, yes, okay, I'll just. So let's, let's take the degree KL, and then it will be K plus L. And then it's very simple. You take K here, uh, alpha here, beta here, and then you just take, expand this to the union uh, of each uh, phi of each B. Ah, yeah. So that's the double union over, over all phi that belongs to alpha and all uh, B that belongs to beta. Okay? So it's the full trace. You apply all your, uh, your different office to all the elements in M. In the cycle. I'm sorry? So it's zero, this map is zero, this is what I said. Yeah, this map is zero. Uh, they are more difficult to use. 
So, so this one is very easy. And uh, this one is only talked about this graph, so it's a bit longer. So this one is short. This one is longer, maybe four to pages, or maybe six. And uh, but I know so you can perfectly read this. Okay, so uh, <coughs> so now we have seen uh, what is invariant morphism. Now I would like to explain the, the geometrical function of this uh, morphism. So we start, so we, st we have exactly the same term as the same uh, hypothesis. So we have phi two, this one, which is a loop. So we know that it's exactly a negative lag of phi uh, of uh, so the loop of this one. We know that we have negative. So we have exactly the same, and then we have the also the choice of this zero, exactly as before. And uh, so now we now we, we do the following. It's a very natural contraction. Uh, so you use phi t as a certain function on t. So you say now you have t equals zero. Now you take the square root of the t, and then divided by the in two parts, the, the start end and the north end and the north. And then you take the direct direct product of this this n. You can take the minus one. And so you have direct product here in our in our defined map. And now we just do so. Phi t is a, is a is a one-term Hamiltonian family and, and the sum is indexed by s one of uh, Hamiltonian diffeomorphism. So you can perfectly identify along the equator, along the equator, you perfectly you can perfectly identify t power on one time, t power on the other time using phi t. And t is the parameter along uh, along the Because phi t is Hamiltonian, this implies that this is a Hamiltonian with a straight uh, with a vibration. Which it, in, in general, is, if phi t is not uh, contractible, this is a, a property which is not not trivial. Well, it, this implies that uh, it's, it's, uh, it implies that this is this is an Hamiltonian fibration. So the fibration which parts of you add. Now, uh, <coughs> I guess this one is in, in topology. When there is a new topology, it is in I think it's 2001 or something. And there is another one in the in Nova Trinity. So, <coughs> so this, this new paper develops what we had what we had done to. Uh, yes, so, so we have a fibration which is part of group Han, and I think I have ex explained that in this, in this case context, we have a sensitive form on the top of space, and then we, 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 we can work with this, and then it turns out that, it, that if you put a, a almost complex structure on the top of space, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, whose restriction to each fiber is uh, an almost complex structure on this fiber, Trained by the, the, the sensitive form on that fiber, it turns out that this gives enough room to have other theorems about the uh, geometry of the almost complex structure. So let me just write this down. So we can we can say as uh, concerning concerning uh, any consideration. Can restrict ourselves. We can restrict ourselves. To, uh, almost, to almost complex structure J on. So what we have here, we have a fibration which is not. No, it's not. It's not stable anymore. So it's T. So we have now a sensitive uh, uh, form here on the top of space. And uh, and then I explained. Uh, I explained that. Yes, 
I knew that this this plant I was not exactly sure what I had the name. Okay, so there is a terrain. Uh, which is due that the first version was due to the Same as, as so, and here I think I, I said that. And here, the, these these forms uh, are all in the are all in the same same class. Same as I was So so this is by definition the same thing. Uh, well, it, it's it, it, this is equivalent to say that the structural group of the fiber tree is true. Fiber-wise, fiber-wise, symplectic uh, isomorphisms, diffeomorphisms over the one skeleton. So that's exactly this. You have B1, which is a, the one skeleton, and then you have over that you have P respected to P respected to V1. And then there is an isomorphism here to V1 times uh, M omega. Okay, so the so here the simplicity form is constant, and here it varies, varies exactly as, uh, as it varied here, but it's uh, only over the one skeleton. So that this is the first condition, which is, uh, uh, this one is easy. The second one is a bit, it's there where you, where you have to work. There exists a close expansion of P. So that's one and P <coughs> and P. So there exists a close, a close expansion of R omega B to a close form, so to a form to a P form tau on P. So, um, so that's it. So, so tau. So when I say a closed extension, it's not only at the mot um, an op uh, mot uh, homology level, but really, it's really, uh, really uh, tau as a form. Uh, and you, when you restrict it, when you restrict it to a fiber and B, it's really exactly omega B. Okay, as form, you can always do that. Okay, so this is called the coffin form. And it's completely unique if you ask, so you might have many of these, but it, it becomes unique if you have that tau to the power n be zero. Okay, tau is a two form, so this is a two n form. And this is a dimension, so this is a dimension two n. Okay. So, um, 
So this is the second condition. So this is the first one. This is the second condition. And now, good. So what, what I'm interested in is the fact that is the fact that we have it here an Hamiltonian fabrication in the sense that the, the in the sense that the structural group is Hamiltonian. Therefore, we can use this theorem, and so we have this snapping form. And then, so now, so now with this snapping form, we construct now a centrical form on the tunnel space. Okay, so what you see is that, so it is closed. So it, it is closed. It is non-degenerate in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, direction, in the directions of the fibers. Okay, and therefore we just have to adjust it. I mean, to modify it so that it be also non-degenerate in the sense of in the or horizon, horizontal sense, okay, or in the horizon, horizontal direction. Okay, so so for this, this is the lemma by Thorsen, the classical lemma, which is not difficult. And it says simply, simply the fact, the following fact. Uh, if the base now here the base was any topological space, so this was any CW complex. Okay, but now if you take B as a synthetic manifold, then uh, so if B is a synthetic manifold, oh, let's see, let me see now. Then uh, then uh, for k, k large enough. Large enough, so this is called pi. So for k large enough, uh, if you sum the snapping form with a pullback, a large pullback of the form downstairs, then this becomes symplectic, really symplectic quantum. Okay, so that's uh, the, so th this theorem plus the lemma shows that when we have a Hamiltonian fabrication. Then we get a, 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 a tunnel space, a tunnel space which is uh, which is uh, symplectic, which forms. Which so this this I will call omega, capital omega. So we get uh, so what we get is a fabrication. Okay, two five p omega over uh, b sigma. Okay, and omega is, is, is fiber, okay, because the restrictions of omega. So the fact that you add a very large multiple of what, what is downstairs, of course, does not, does not change the fact that omega re still restricts on the fibers to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the manifold, to the, to the fiber uh, MB, MB with omega B. Okay, so, that's, uh, so, so, so then we get, a, with this theorem, we get a, from any Hamiltonian fabrication, we get a, over a, over a base which is a synthetic manifold, we get a tensile space which is a synthetic manifold and which is ruled, M ruled. Okay, so now uh, now I can I can explain what I wanted to explain. So now we have so now we have this vibration here. So uh, over S two, and now we know that so we know that that we have this capital omega here over S two. And uh, <coughs> and uh, so now the, uh, the the what I was going to say is that uh, there is no so uh, in all so concerning all uh, considerations. Of genericity of uh, all geomorphic sections. Yes, let's say of yes of uh, of uh, let's say that um, of geomorphic sections uh, like this. So uh, yes. I should probably change sigma for A because I would like probably to have sigma as exception. So this will be A, this will be A. A for area, let's say. Even if it's just in dimension two, but maybe it won't. So, uh, oh, okay. okay, so that's, uh, that's uh, okay, so that's uh, A. So for, uh, so, so considering any, any, all considerations of genericity for geomorphic sections uh, of that projection. So uh, S2, S2 omega. We can restrict ourselves to 
to, uh, <coughs> to almost not extractional. J on P, that's our rule. In the obvious sense, that is the rule meaning that, that J respective to any fiber in B uh, is equal to omega B. That was given at the beginning of the talk. Okay, so, uh, so it simply means that the, the, the space, this, this subspace of, of, of almost complex structures is large enough, is large enough to, uh, to get everything that we want. So once again, in order to get the theorem that I will say, uh, we have to work on, on monotone manifolds, but then if we apply the new techniques developed by Offer and uh, Fukaya Ono Tai, we can ha get the same results uh, with more analysis. With more analysis. Okay, usually, if you want, yeah, yeah, so you hear that, that sentence? Yeah. Yes, usually if you wish to work on this, on this, on this is, a, th now we know that this is a synthetic manifold. It turns out that it is rule, okay? Because rule is in the sense that omega itself is rule. Yes, I should have maybe said that. It's, it's clear by the formula here. If you restrict omega to any fiber, then you get, so, capital omega restricted to any fiber and B is equal to omega b. And omega b was given at the beginning of the, okay, the construction. Okay. So this is what I mean by a synthetic uh, vibration. Okay, with, so it's ruled. And now what I'm saying is that when you have such a, a synthetic manifold, you could, a priori, you could have to work with a very large uh, set of almost complex structures. That is all the, all the ones, all the ones that belong to j of omega, that is, which are just almost complex structures claimed by or capital omega. But what I'm saying is that we can restrict this, this big set to a subset, okay, and work only with this subset, and the subset is made of, the subset is made of all complex structures compatible with capital omega, so it's here, but that have also the property that if you restrict these to fibers, then you get, oh, sorry. Okay, I, now I understand what, oh, yes. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying that, uh, that G restricted to me, sorry, I, I mean, so j this is belongs to the omega. Sorry. It just means what is what is there. <laughs> yes, o the, the fact that omega respect it, it means that the, the restriction of omega to each fiber is gives to that fiber the structure of a synthetic form first, and that and that form is is the one that we have uh, that we have started with. So now, uh, now we choose the reference section. So this will play the, the, the role of the D zero that we had before. Okay, but because I'm just now, I'm now I just want to define the vital morphism from some other, from another, another point, of point of view, and as an automorphism of the quantum homology and not, and not as, the, as a, an automorphism of the pure homology. So we know that pure homology and quantum homology are the same, but uh, as as a morphism. But now there is this construction is uh, geometrically different. So it's, uh, it's the, the following. So, so, uh, so now you take, uh, you pick a, where is it? Oops. So, so the role, the role of D zero, is played now, played by the choice of uh, a homology class. You can you can always work with homology class or homotopy classes, but hom homology classes are less. Uh, Smaller, so you, you, you get the, and the results are the same. 
But the job you have the same results is there. It's not it's not up to you. This is why I, I always many people work with homotopy classes, but I prefer to work with homology classes. So the rule of this is always played by the choice of an homology of, of an homology uh, class in a in, in set uh, set homology class. Okay, so I shall see. And uh, <coughs> so we choose that, and then now we will have to. We wish now to define uh, to define the map, which is the Zeibel map. So that's uh, phi capital phi of phi d zero, map d zero sigma. Okay, so which is uh, so which is uh, uh, that goes from the quantum homology of n infinity. To, uh, to the quantum homology of n uh, zero, so n infinity is here. And then we take C to the last one of B. And then C belongs to uh, F sub of N zero. And now we look, now we look at in the set plane, now we have the set plane. So we look at all the homotopy classes in the set plane and then we have the map. So that's the idea. Thank you. 
اگر به تو میگفتن که آره این with n infinity and then you have this first vibration with phi t then you have a second fiber which is n0 and then you take a second vibration here with a fiber which is n infinity here and m0 there uh, let's let's call it m0 prime and m infinity prime and now you take phi t inverse so you have these two vibrations, and what you do is you look at sections. Yeah. So, so now you compose the, the, the two homomorphisms. So we have two homomorphisms here. And what we show is, in order to show that they are isomorphic, it's, it's enough to show that if I compose the one here with the one there, then I get the identity. Okay. And the idea is exactly this. That is, uh, so it's a gluing theorem where any, any section given here can be glued with a section given here transversally, which is transversally intersection. And when I glue this section, I get the composition of the map. And therefore, because it's glued, the, uh, the, the, well, before it's glued at this, at this so we glue on, on the neighborhood of the, of the fiber here. And therefore, we get a new vibration over S2. Okay. We, with a new, we get a new vibration over S2, whose uh, who's now, who's now clutching function is simply the, the composition of phi t and phi t inverse, which is simply the identity. OK, so now we get a trivial vibration. And as you, as you mentioned, when, the, when it is trivial, it's not too hard to show. It's not, it's not, it's not completely obvious. It's not too hard to show that it, is, it has a trivial vibration. And if you use this definition, then the only this is the other yeah, yeah. So that's, so that's, that's the idea of the It's OK, th th yes, this is the idea of the proof of that theorem. But, but now, now, now we can prove the main theorem. And now it's very easy. So now we know that, so now we know that these are isomorph isomorphisms. So it means that beca because they are isomorphisms, it means that if you take A, which is not 0, in the homology of, in the quantum of the ordinary homology of n infinity, so pick, I will write this down. If you pick a class, any class which is not, uh, uh, well, whatever the next examination, if you pick uh, a class which is not zero inside, inside the homology, or the, the homology, or ordinary homology of n, then we know that this homomorphism of n cannot vanish, okay, because we know that it's, we have an homomorphism, so it has to be injected. So, uh, and therefore, it implies that th this homomorphism of n, so it's not, there is at least one b, not zero b, because this is linear on, on, uh, So, uh, so it means that if A is not zero, then there is at least one B such that this gamma contained invariance doesn't match. Okay, that's exactly the first, so direct uh, consequence of what we have just seen. But now that the, the proof is finished, because it means that if A is not zero, then the other that A cannot be zero either. Okay? Because, because the gamma contained invariance of C only, only C the other of A, okay, and not, and not A. So and therefore, I think that the fiber, the only the fiber injects in the homology of the total space, and by blurry here, this implies that the homology of the total space is on the edge of the So, uh, so yeah, this is what we have done. So Oh, yes, this is 
supply what I wish, I need uh, rational decisions. So for supply the Lurie Hirsch, so this is Lurie Hirsch. So now there are uh, various generalizations of this. Conjecture is that this is always true for any base. This is true for F. When the base is F2, the conjecture is that this is H Always The interest of that theorem is that it gives you a fraction to construct a new synthetic manifold. Yes. Uh, 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 an obvious way to construct a new, a new synthetic manifold from a base is Now, the <coughs> now this conjecture has been proved by uh, Magnus and myself. So, uh, so in the case where uh, the base, so for whatever the, the timer is, for the base is any product of product of two. So first of all, when it is any, uh, any two or three dimensional, one two or three dimensional, yes, one two or three dimensional uh, CW complex, uh, when it is a product of the I. Of any equation of the compact system. Okay, yeah, there are, we have other cases, but you know, the basic one. Okay, so that's the first application. Now I have a few minutes to try to explain the second one, which is now in which works on the relative case. Okay, now the relative uh, is morphism. Okay, 
OK, now you have M omega, L, Lagrange compact, and Lagrange N inside M. And uh, <coughs> now we define ham L of M as being a subgroup of ham of M, which is by definition exactly all the, diff the, the Hamiltonian diffeomorphism in ham, such that phi preserves not necessarily pointwise L. Okay, it's very important. That it's not necessarily pointwise. <coughs> okay, so um, that's phi. Yeah. Okay, so it's uh, yes, of course. So f because phi is Hamiltonian, then there is always a choice of um, of isotopy from zero to one. And then what, what this, this, this definition says is that we look at these isotopies, uh, isotopies so, that, uh, so that at the end point, so that, so, such that it is M at each, point, at each moment, moment, uh, moment, phi zero is the identity, and phi one preserve M, preserves M. <coughs> Okay, so uh, <coughs> so M L is here, but there might so this is the identity. There might be, of course, other components. This is this is the inter interesting case, and this is M. <coughs> okay, now you. Okay, now you use uh, what I wish now to to do is to use this to construct a relative Zygol morphism. So in a completely natural way. So there are two ways of, of doing this, exactly like before. So in a way which is analytic and the other way which is geometric. <coughs> okay, now so suppose that Suppose that, uh, that we have the, 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 the nice condition for to have the, uh, the Fleur and uh, the quantum homology defined, well defined. Then, uh, <coughs> then phi, we can define phi of phi t. So this is a Zydel morphism corresponding to phi t and a choice d0. So now the choice d0 will be simply a choice exactly like before. So we take a point here, P, then we'll just take the image of phi t, of phi t by the image of P by phi t. And because phi 1 preserves L, the end point is on L also. So we, we, so we start at L and we end at L, and then we'll just choose a contractible disk here. So a disk, I mean. We choose a disk, uh, which is called D0, that will play, that will play exactly the role of the disk that we had in the absolute case. It's just to fix the the, uh, the contentions, and uh, <coughs> and now the, um, the, no, the so the map will be will go from the pure homology of uh, of ML uh, HTJ to the pure homology uh, pure homology of uh, ML. G, uh, H, what, what is it? HT again. G, like NSO, which is given exactly in the, in the same way as we did before in the absolute case. That is, we first go, we first go by to, from this to the homology of M, L, and then G, T, J, and then we go. So, so this is given by the, really by the Zydel morphism. Where you, where you applied phi t to ga gamma t. And then here, this is the canonical identification. <coughs> OK, 
OK, so this is the def definition of the, uh, uh, of the relative Zeiden morphism. And now it's, what is interesting is to try to, try to construct this in, in a geometric way. So, um, so now, the, so what is the, 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 so this is more interesting. So this is, uh, what is the geometric construction? So it's, uh, you start, so you, you, you take the, this D2, and then you take just the zero here. So this is D2 is the, the unit, the closed unit uh, disk in C. And now you use, so now you take the product, so this is D2, now you take the product D2 with N, and now you use uh, phi, phi T, so, th so you have this product, yeah? and that's where you have exactly like before, so, th so this ray will play the role of the equator in the, in, in the absolute case, and so as before we can use phi T, so this is say phi one third, phi one half, phi two thirds, and phi one, so we can use each, for each t, we can use phi, phi t to identify the fiber on one side with the fiber on the other side, okay? And because at the zero, at zero, phi zero is the identity, there is no singularity. Okay. Is it clear? I'm not sure that you, you don't seem convinced. Okay, once more. Okay, so I take the, the product, so this is D2. I take the product of D2 with M, okay? And now what I wish, okay, so I, I, I have this. Now I cut the, the old vibration, I cut it along this ray, okay? I open it up, okay? So now I have two sides. So if, if you open it, it could be open if you wish. I don't want to, it could be slightly open like this. Okay, okay? so this is what you have. And then they have a direct product, so this, you have direct product with, of this with M. And now on, for each point, here, and the corresponding point on the other side, I have two fibers. Okay, the, the M fibers. Okay, I have two fibers. And I use phi at this point, so phi is parameterized, okay, the T here is exactly, the, it goes from one to zero to one, okay? So I use this phi T to identify the two fibers. Is it better? Okay, perfect, so. <clears throat> okay, so what do I get? As a vibration, of course, I wor I'm working on D over D2, so as a vibration, it's still trivial over D2. But the point is that I have a sub-manifold here over the circle, so over the circle, which is the boundary of the disk. In each fiber, in each fiber, I have the, so if for, if for each Z on the boundary, for each Z on the boundary of the circle, I have a fiber, and on this fiber, MZ, I have LZ, okay, which is always the same submanifold L. It's always the same M and it's always the same L. But the point is that when I do, when I go back here, then I attach the two copies here, the two copies here with phi one. Because phi one preserves L, this constructs a new uh, vibration, okay, which is simply the union of all these, all these constant L on the boundary, okay, with the identification given by phi one here. Okay, so let's define N. So the, and this will be a Lagrange sub manifold of the full object. So now it's not a direct product anymore, it's P. Okay, so, uh, so now let's define N as, so, so let's, let's say that P is, uh, is obtained, obtained from, from D2 times M by, using phi t zero one as a clutching function. Along the ray, along the ray 
that goes from zero to one. Oops. Okay, so that's inside C. Okay, so that's P, and uh, and N now. So that's P, and N. So P will be a synthetic a synthetic uh, manifold, a fiber also, and N is a Lagrange manifold of P. Which is by definition <coughs> obtained by taking uh, uh, L times uh, the boundary. So I have opened this. So let's call this. Uh, let's let's call this. Or, or should I call this uh, the boundary of D two minus the point one? The point one is here. So minus the point one. And uh, and then then you. Pass to the quotient by identifying L uh, at one, L one minus, with L one plus using F. Sorry, using phi one. <coughs> okay, it's, which is the same as taking, if you wish, L times zero one, with the identification of L times zero goes to L times one by F <coughs> by phi. Uh, no, it's not F, sorry, it's phi 1. Okay, perfect. So that's the definition of, uh, of phi. So what, what we get? So we had some uh, Lagrange some manifold in some so of dimension n in some 2n dimensional manifold. Now we have a P, which is 2n plus 2, sorry, n plus 2n plus 2 synthetic manifold containing a Lagrange some manifold, which has dimension n plus 1. N coming from the from the L from the LN and, P, and the one coming from the boundary of the of the D2, which is the circle. And then now what we do is exactly the same as what the, we did before, but now we look at sections which we, that have that have boundary on N. So we look at sections of this dongle that have boundary on on N. So now we can define this. Okay, so uh, okay, alors, uh, so yes, so so now you pick you pick as usual J on P, which is ruled. So it's, uh, it's restriction to any fiber is uh, is a normal complex structure compatible with that fiber, and uh, J of course belongs to J of P. Omega, and then uh, uh, so uh, so which is ruled. Uh, this is what I said, and uh, and in, and you pick also a section class. So just an homology, an homology class, which can be realized as a section uh, of uh, of P with boundary on N. Maybe I could do a better picture. Okay, now this is m uh, i. This is m minus i. And now, what is the idea? So, <coughs> so this is our disk. And now the idea is to take a fiber here. So uh, m i. So, so this is sorry. So this is the point i. This is the point minus i. And now I look at fibers m i that contains l i, and here the fiber uh, M minus I that contains L minus I. And then what I do is I, once I have fixed sigma as a class, then I'm, uh, I will simply, so I will, I will start here. So I, I, now I work on quantum homology of the, of the, of the Lagrange the manifold. So I, what I will do is to pick, a, so I pick functions Fi, so functions Fi on Mi, R, and I have also to pick Gi, which is a Riemannian metric, Riemannian metric on Mi. In the same, in exactly the same, the same with minus i. And uh, so now that I have that, then I can perfectly flow. Oops, I can perfectly flow up here uh, from an, any critical point. So that's p, which is a critical point of of f i. Now I flow until until I reach. So I flow. So I flow. So I flow in, in a fiber. So a priori, it, there could be disk. 
but they will not be uh, very soon. There will be no disk, but there could be disk like this. So, so that goes down. That's, so it flows down along the negative gradient flow of Fi, and uh, and then until it it reach a bubble, so a disk with boundary in Li lying lying inside Mi, and then you go down and sit until you reach a section. A section. I should have done. I should have. have uh, I should have drawn this uh, there. <coughs> so this is m. This is minus i, and this is m minus i that contains l minus i. Okay. So so I have these two, two fibers, and then I can perfectly flow here until I reach a section, and a geomorphic section, of course. So a geomorphic section, and this geomorphic section will cross, will cross, will 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 meet the fiber at a point. And then I can perfectly flow down, flow down using now the gradient, the negative gradient of f minus i. So, uh, so f, f minus i until I reach. There, there could be this also until I reach a point, a critical critical point q. Critical point q of the function f minus i. So, uh, so that's the so that's the section here. So, the, so, the, so the definition now is the following. Now we define the the, the Zeidel morphism uh, of uh, of uh, phi t uh, s sigma uh, phi from uh, the quantum homology of uh, m uh, i l i to uh, right. Uh, sorry, oops. M I L I F I F I G I from the to the quantum homology of M minus I L minus I F minus I G minus I, and this is defined as uh, okay uh, exactly as I did by looking at so this is defined by by looking so. By in the, let's say in the following way, uh, capital phi of a, a critical point P is equal to the summation of. Uh, now, now we don't. Now we don't need to dualize because we work on on uh, with uh, Morse theory. So, uh, uh, capital psi of P is equal to the summation over uh, a Q times e, e to the power uh, e to the power uh, lambda. Uh, so this is phi t. Sigma is the star. So where well now the uh, the summation is both on Q and on e lambda, lambda. And the, uh, the uh, there is a coefficient here, so a Q lambda. And where this coefficient a Q lambda is equal to, so a Q lambda is equal to the uh, the cardinality of sections. J sections in class sigma plus lambda. Uh, sorry, uh, yes, meeting. Uh, sorry, I need uh, e to the power lambda. Yes, exactly. Okay, perfect. Yes, in class sigma uh, sigma plus lambda uh, meeting. Uh, um, Meeting the, uh, the 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 configuration, the configuration that I have here. So here, uh, what I do is, I so we can we can we can do both. That is, we can perfectly change the the, the, the section class. Okay, so this this could be perfectly lambda plus plus. Uh, 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 that's here, sorry, sigma plus, uh, it could be sigma plus lambda, and, no, it could be here, lambda plus a, sorry. So this could be lambda plus a, and then the class is sigma plus lambda plus a. Okay, so where lambda, so where uh, sigma is a reference class, and then lambda is what, whatever you add to change, to change the, uh, the, 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 uh, the class of your holomorphic section here, and then a here, finally, a is the total class that you get here, and at the sum, the sum of the so that's the, the, the 
just want to emphasize. So we have the same theorem that is this depends only on the homotopy class of. if you wish. Here we have a relative morphic. So this is a so this is a relative value morphic. This is the absolute one. And goes to the other. so each so each one goes to the absolute value. So each one goes to a, a an isomorphic, an, an isomorphic, which is an another which is an automorphic. In both cases they are given by uh, by product of a pair of signs. So in the case, in the, in the absolute case, we have, done, we have seen that. In the, in the relative case, these are half pair of pants. So you just take the half pair of pants, the pants in the picture, and you cut it in two, and then you just uh, put it on the diagonal so many points. So, uh, so something like this. Just take one minute to, uh, to, uh, to, to uh, it's very simple to, uh, to, to get the, the last uh, application. So, uh, So exactly the same argument as before tells you tell tell, tell us that yuta of uh, of um, of l inside so yuta no it doesn't matter you choose the convention that you that you wish but you, yeah but you, you're better to okay, so to keep it uh, right. Yes, well, that's exactly what it yeah, is very nice in this, in this commutative, commutative diagram, actually. I'm sorry, I, don't, I, I, I really have to. Maybe we can discuss that. After. So, we, we, so we have Yota that goes from L to M. And exactly the same argument as before, so the same argument. Because, because the, zydol, the, zydolomorphism, the relative zydolomorphism is, a, is, a, is an automorphism. Uh, in the, 
so the same, same argument implies that iota is injective in homology. I, re I, I really I finish. Uh, I will finish in just uh, one minute. So, so now you have so now you have the vibration L N. Uh, sorry, not N M in N uh, in N is injective in homology because actually this N is included in M. So if if this vanished there, it will vanish there, and then it, it, we would not have an isomorphism. So what we know obviously is that this so this. I'm sorry. That's L inside M. This is what I want. No, M is the Oh, sorry, P. So this is what you said. Yes, P, of course. Yeah, thank you. This is what you said. Yeah. Okay, so the, sa so the same argument is that uh, shows that this, this so yota from, from, uh, from L to N is injective in homology. Now you have a fibration, which is the fiber is L, the total space is N. Now just forget everything, uh, all, forget all the um, algebraic, uh, all the synthetic geometry, just want to concentrate on very simple uh, sim uh, algebraic topology. So you have this over S1, and then you have, let me just be sure that I don't get it wrong. So now you have the, uh, the one exact sequence for any vibration like this, which is the, the, which is the following, one, following one, and that will be the last line of the, the talk. The theta that goes to HK of N, and goes with inter intersection with the fiber, inside hk minus 1 of l. And here it's phi minus identity. Phi is a phi 1. And here it's uh, hk minus 1 of l. And it goes like this, theta, hk minus 1 of l. OK, so we have this. This is the, exact, the one exact sequence for any fibration over s1. And so this is, OK, so I repeat, this is simply the injection of uh, the inclusion of l inside n. Now, this is this. Now, if you have a cycle in N, you can, of course, intersect this with a fiber. So, this is the intersection with the fiber. And now it turns out that what you need here is, uh, is phi. So, you have a map from HK minus 1 L to, it, to itself. And this is given simply by taking the difference of phi 1 star. Okay, so we know uh, restricted to L. Okay, so, so, by definition here, what I mean by phi is the restriction of, is the restriction of, phi, of phi 1 to L. And then I take this in homology as a map from the homology to, of L to itself, minus the identity. So, uh, so this is very simple uh, exact sequence. And now we know that this, so now we know that, uh, that this is injective. Because this is injective, the kernel is zero, so it means that the image of this is zero. So yota injective implies that phi minus is injective, is zero. That is to say, that is to say phi is equal to the identity in the homology. <coughs> okay, so that's the end uh, of the series of talks. Homology of L. Yeah, homology of L. Yeah. Ordinary, yes, ordinary homology of L. Yeah. 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 Yeah.